But do we as believers suffer in these last days? Do we as believers live under a cloud of lack and under a cloud of sickness? No, not at all. Hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor George Pearsons, and I welcome you to this very special edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. First of all, I want to thank Kenneth and Gloria Copeland for asking me to be on this week and to share the things that are on my heart as far as what we need to know about these times that we are in, how do we prosper in these times? How do we prosper in tough times? You know, at the time that we are taping this, we're still in the throes of dealing with COVID-19 and the residual effects of it uh, coming out of it. We have our economy to deal with and the things in the economy. And I just really do believe that the Lord has some things that He wants to encourage us about where living in the kingdom of God is concerned, living in His kingdom here on earth. So let's pray right now. Let's believe God over this time that we have together this week. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just worship you and praise you for every person who's watching us right now. And I thank you that you are in the midst of everything that goes on in our lives. You are still prospering us. You are still ministering to us. You are still strong in our lives. And we honor you and thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the first thing I want us to do is I want us to take a look at 2 Timothy 3.1. And that's where we're going to begin in this study. We are talking about prospering in tough times. And how do we prosper in the midst of everything that's going on? You know, right now, again, during the time of this taping, people have been laid off. They've been furloughed on their jobs. There's a lot of concern that's going on, a lot of consternation about how are we going to get this paid? How are we going to be able to pay our mortgage? How are we going to be able to pay our rent? What are we going to do in times like this? And you need to know and you need to understand. And I'm thinking right now about a word from the Lord that Brother Copeland had back about 10 years ago, talking to us during the Southwest Believers Convention. And I'll read just a little portion of this to you. <clears throat> the Lord said through him, the world is in serious trouble, but for the household of faith and those that will cling to my word and listen very carefully, everything is going to be all right. And we need to stand on that and we need to believe it and we need to receive it, that everything is going to be all right. But Pastor George, what about the things that are going on around us? What about the things that we're seeing on the news and, and what's taking place in our nation? You know, what happened uh, at the beginning of this year when we first started out, I, I heard somebody say one time or, or read about this, they want to press a reset button on 2020 so that we can start this thing all over again. But here we are in the midst of the, the situation that we have been in. And what does that say about the times that we are in? When we look at 2 Timothy 3.1, <clears throat> and 2 Timothy 3.1 is very clear about this and it's very simple. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So here we are, we're in the last days, but do we as believers suffer in these last days? Do we as believers live under a cloud of lack and under a cloud of sickness? No, not at all. The government of Jesus is increasing and it's increasing more and more. And you and I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have definitely been redeemed from the curse of lack. We've been redeemed from the curse of poverty. We've been redeemed from the curse of not enough. And you know, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. It doesn't matter the times that we are in, we are still being taken care of. But what it says here in this scripture, that perilous days shall come. Well, I looked up the word perilous in the Greek. Listen to this, difficult days, dark days, dangerous, furious, fierce, hard to take, troublesome, savage, and tough. 
there's one translation that says, you must understand this, that in the last days, distressing times will come. In the Amplified Translation, understand this, in the last days will come or set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Well, as I just read to you from that word that Brother Copeland gave, the world is in serious trouble, but we have to understand something about ourselves. Believers, people who are born again, people who know the Lord Jesus Christ, that even though in these perilous times, which are described in those words such as difficult and pressurized and stress and trouble, we have to understand that according to John 17, 16, Jesus said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now that really opens a door to us to understand how to deal with the times that we're in, really how to understand any of the times that we're in. We may be in this world, but you and I are not of it. We are not of its economic system. We are not of the things that are trying to bear down on the world. But you and I, as we will learn this week, we've been set apart. We've been separated from this and we live on the earth in a different place and we live in the kingdom of God. That's where we are. So during these five days that we have together, I want you to really focus in, especially if you're struggling right now, if you are one of those that were laid off and you've had a hard time finding another job, if you're one of those that you were hit hard financially or maybe your investments were hit hard. And I'll let you know something that where you and I live, especially as a tither, as a giver, as a sower, the devil cannot touch our investments. Well, Pastor George, how, how does that work? Well, it's very clear in the Word of God that we're in this world, but we are not of it. And so we're protected from it. We're protected from the ravages of it. And we are protected from the collateral damage of the world system. And the Lord has ways, God has ways to keep you on top and not the bottom. We are the head and not the tail. And he can do that right in the midst of whatever you are going through and whatever you're experiencing right now. He can take you into that place of his protection, his prosperity, and you can prosper in tough times. Let's take a look at this scripture in Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one is talking about really who we are in Christ. And that's so important that you and I know who we are in Christ, that we know where we stand in him. And as according to the 112th Psalm, our hearts are established. They're established in him. No matter what is going on, no matter what is taking place, we are established in him. And you have to know the position you hold in him positionally, where you are in him. And it's very clear in Colossians chapter one in verses 12 through 14. Listen to this. He says, giving thanks unto the father, which has made us meet or made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That scripture says so much about positionally where we are in all of this and what's going on and what's happening. Well, it says, first of all, he's, been, he's made us able to be partakers of the inheritance. We are joint heirs with Jesus, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Then it says this, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. You and I now have been delivered from the power of darkness and anything that is of the curse is darkness. That's what darkness is. Lack is darkness. Just, just barely making it is darkness. And when you were born again, when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, then 
you were and I was translated, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You've and I, you and I have been translated out of the, the ravages and the effects of this world. It says, in whom we have redemption. That word redemption means rescued. We've been rescued from the kingdom of darkness. And it's been through his blood, the precious blood of the lamb and given us even the forgiveness of sins. So we've been translated. Now, what does that mean translated? In the Greek, the word translated means transferred, to be transferred or to be carried away. Those in military understand what a transfer is. You understand that when you're transferred from one base to another, and you might be transferred from one part of this country to another, or you might be transferred outside of the United States. There's a transfer that takes place and you are taking you and your family and you're being carried away or another definition of the phrase transferred to be removed from one place to another. You are removed from one place to another. So those of you that are transferred, let's say from the the, the colds area, cold areas of maybe Europe or something like that, and you're transferred to Hawaii. You're, you're going to have to make some changes. There's some cultural changes that are be, being taken place from, from one very cold atmosphere to a very warm atmosphere and palm trees and ocean. There's a whole difference in that. And, and especially, especially if you're transferred from, let's say the United States of America and you're transferred to Germany or someplace like that. There's a whole culture there. There's a language there. There, there are things that they do there that are different from what you do here. Well, that's the same thing when you're translated out of darkness. When you are translated out of darkness, you are translated from a lack mentality. You are translated from a poverty mentality. You are translated from that darkness and you've been carried off and carried away and you have been placed into this place of the kingdom of God. And what a glorious place it is. What a place it is to experience the provision of God. He's your source. No longer is the world your source, but he is your source. It says in verse 13 of the Amplified Translation, the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control of the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Isn't that wonderful? To be transferred into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Now, verses 13 and 14 from the New Living Translation says, he's rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So we have been rescued. We've been rescued. Well, Pastor George, we're, we're still here. We're still in the same house. We're still in the same neighborhood. Yes, but you have taken up a new position in the kingdom of God on earth. And I'll tell you an illustration, which we'll get to this later into the week, but an illustration is what took place with the children of Israel in the land of Goshen. There was light in the land of Goshen and darkness in the land of Egypt. And they were very, very close proximity to each other. But one was experiencing the conditions of the kingdom of God. The other one was, was experiencing the conditions of darkness. And you see, that's the exact same thing that takes place with us here. I use this illustration quite often that there, there, uh, there are partners of this ministry that earlier this year, they were in the midst of a terrible tornado that came ravaging through their neighborhood. But this particular couple, you look at their house and none of what took place around them took place with their house. What in the world happened? What took place there? Well, we just know that these believers who were using the name of Jesus, who were pleading the blood of Jesus, whatever storm was there was tiptoeing around that house and that house stood 
You've seen pictures of this before. You've seen pictures of houses that, that are standing right in the midst of everything else around them being flattened out. Well, that's what we call same conditions, different results. And that's what we expect in the kingdom of God on earth. Same conditions, but we get different results. And that should be an encouragement for other people to want to become born again and to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, because in that they'll experience protection and they'll experience the healing power of God and the delivering power of God. And the more we know about this, and this is what's so important, we must adjust our words, our thoughts, and our actions to the kingdom that we've been translated to, or we will keep living in the dark. And we do that by renewing our minds in the Word of God. We renew our minds. I was born again in the summer of 1972. And I'm so thankful that I, I was connected to a church. I had a pastor. And then when I went to Oral Roberts University, I had a church that I was going to there studying the Word of God, then came to Kenneth Copeland Ministries and totally immersed in the Word of God and still am totally immersed in the Word of God. Do you know what I'm doing? I am adjusting my words, my thoughts, and my actions to kingdom living and kingdom culture. Kingdom culture is so important. The kingdom culture that we align ourselves to, we have to learn about it from the Word of God. There are some people who've been born again for years but do not know that they've been translated into the kingdom of dear son, his dear son. They, they have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. So they're still living in that place. We have to change our thinking, our actions, our words, and align them with the kingdom culture and the kingdom of God and not live in the dark any longer. Let me give you two quotes from Pastor Bill Winston. He said, we must get our minds renewed to the reality of the kingdom of God and who we are in that kingdom, who we are, who we are in the midst of, of, of a coronavirus or whatever is going on. Who are we and what is that? What is that devilish thing that has nothing against us? That's part of the curse. And Jesus bore that and delivered us from it so we don't have to take it. It doesn't belong to us. Well, Bill Winston also said this, don't tell me what the kingdom of God can't do. Can you hear him say it? Don't tell me what the kingdom of God can't do. It can do and it can be used specifically to cut through anything to get you anything that you want independent of what is going on in the world system. That is a powerful phrase right there. He said, don't tell me what the kingdom can't do. It can do, and it can be used specifically to cut through anything to get you anything you want, independent of what is going on in the world system. Independence from the world system. Independence from the world sickness independence from all of that, that's what the kingdom of God will do for us. And that's why we can prosper in the toughest of times. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. We belong to God. We belong to him that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let me bring you this thought. We are not subject to the times. That's important. And that's a theme that will run through in this week. We're not subject to these times. Let me read to you Psalm 9, verses 9 and 10, amplified. The Lord also will be a refuge and a high tower for the oppressed, a refuge and a stronghold in times of trouble, high cost, destitution, and desperation. And they who know your name, who have experience and acquaintance with your mercy and will lean on and confidently put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek, inquire of, and for you on the authority of God's word and on the right of their necessity. So let me give you a couple of phrases. We no longer live under the dominion, the rule, control, or influence of whatever direction the economy and the world system are going at the moment. We are not subject to the times that we live in. 
We are not subject to the curse. We are subject to the blessing. What is the blessing? Genesis 1:28. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. That works no matter what kind of economic system is going on. We are now subject to and governed by another economy and another system called the kingdom of God. The times are subject to us. Yes, they are. The times that we live in, they're subject to you as a believer in Christ Jesus. We are subject to the authority of God's word, the blood of the lamb and the name of Jesus. And in troubled times, when the cost of living is high, and people have lost their jobs and they're struggling. When all of that is going on and, and debt has accumulated, God has promised to be our refuge and our high tower. Folks, we don't just survive in tough times. We prosper and we thrive. He'll lift us up and over economic, any economic situation that's going on, any economic downturn that's going on. Don't let fear get on the inside of you. I've heard people, different pundits talking about, we've got a great depression. We've got a great recession. We've got all of this going on. It does not have to touch you and me. We will prosper right through it in the same way that Brother Copeland's father, A.W. Copeland, during the Great Depression of the 30s, he and his wife, Vanetta Copeland, they tithed, they prayed, they stood on the Word of God, and they had a job, and they were prosperous all the way through the Great Depression. So don't get in fear over this. Don't start walking in fear. God has a covenant determination to prosper you and me. He's determined. He's determined for the eyes of the Lord go, go to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for those that will be open to him to receive his blessing and to receive his goodness. He wants to prosper you in the toughest of times. And what we need to do is we need to walk by faith and receive and believe all that he has for us in this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over your people right now and I thank you, Lord, that we're living in a different culture. We're living in a different place. Even though we're on this earth, we are not of it. And I thank you, Lord, that in these times, we don't just survive, we thrive. The times, the times, Lord, we're not subject to these times. We live of the, in the kingdom of God on earth. And I thank you, Lord, that we are thriving. We're flourishing. I pray over all of those right now that are needing jobs. Father, I thank you that jobs are coming, good jobs. We call them around here assignments, perfect assignments from heaven. Lord, you are opening the door. You are prospering your people and you are watching them and you are seeing them at this time and at this hour, debt free, and free from every financial burden. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I'll be right back. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. We live in a time when challenges and uncertainty surround us. Jesus said we are in this world, but not of it. We function under a different and stable kingdom God is our refuge and stronghold in times of trouble. No matter what is happening around us, we shine as a light of God's protection and goodness. We thrive and not just survive. The How to Prosper in Tough Times package includes a 10-part series with Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons. The study notes of all 10 sessions are also included and are useful to delve deeper into the scriptures taught in the messages or are great for you to share with others. This series will encourage you and strengthen your trust in God. Understand how much God loves you and that he is well able to take care of you no matter the circumstances. 
you can experience His supernatural provision in your life today. Request your free copy of How to Prosper in Tough Times, an in-depth study by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons on how to apply God's Word to any situation and come out victorious. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. We may be living in troubled times, but we are not subject to the way the world is going. No, we are subject to the blessing of the Lord. I'm so grateful for that. And that's our deciding factor for success. We live in our covenant promises. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the covenant that we have with you. Now, the free product that we have for you this week, the materials is a series that Glory and I taught on the same thing that I'm teaching here, except we went into a whole lot more detail about it. And these are the notes from it. Glory and I has treme- Gloria has tremendous comments that she makes on it. And then there's some material in the back. Uh, there's so much here. You can, you can get this and just really do a major study on how to prosper in tough times. We want you to have that. We want you to request, request this teaching on kcm.org and take advantage of this and get out of that place of of the poverty mentality and get on over into the place of the prosperity mentality. Father, in Jesus' name, once again, I pray for everyone who's watching and I thank you. I declare that every bill is paid, every need is supplied, every debt is wiped out, and Lord, you are providing for these families right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, are you receiving the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine? Well, it's our free monthly publication and you'll find life-changing articles, testimonies. It'll build up your faith. It'll strengthen you. Go to kcm.org to request your free subscription or you can read the magazine online. And I'll tell you this, I was part of that magazine back in the Well, when I came to work here in 1976 and I worked on the magazine, publishing it for 13 years. So I have, I have a lot of experience with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. And you know, and we still do this to lay hands on some of those magazines so that when they go out in the mail and people touch them, we were believing, we were believing for healings to take place. So you, you lay your hands on that magazine. Anyway, we're going to be going tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the separation effect. So this is Pastor George reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive free faith-based teaching resources, such as a digital download of today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. You can download it straight to your computer or mobile. Continue to grow in your faith in God and live in the wisdom of His Word. Believe God to bring new visions, His manifested power, and great change in your life.